Hello, welcome to the last few slides that spilled over from the third part of the lecture on financial economics. We'll have only five or six slides here and wrap up our discussion on financial economics or personal finance. Well, we were discussing the drawbacks of real estate investing. Uh, a second drawback is the fact that tax burden is typically higher in real estate investing in comparison to securities investing. And the, the, the property tax rates are actually much lower than the capital gains tax rates, which are what's applied on securities investing. They're 1.2% versus 15% or so uh, in Austin. Uh, I say in Austin because property tax rates change from one county to another. In Travis County, where Austin is, it's 1.2% on average uh, versus 15% for the investments like stocks and mutual funds. Uh, however, uh, this, this property tax rate is paid out of the entire value of the, of the uh, investment rather than just the growth portion as it is in stock investing. So if you, when you buy a stock or a mutual fund, uh, when, when you sell that, you pay this uh, capital gains taxes and uh, it is a higher rate, 15%, but you pay it only when you sell it and also only for the amount of your profits. So if you, you bought it for 100, sold it for 120, 20 dollars is your profits times however many shares you have. That's your overall profits in absolute terms for from this investing. And 15% taxes apply to that portion only. Whereas property tax rates apply to the entire value of your property and it's paid every year, worse yet. So for this reason, Typically, the tax burden would be higher, but the good news is that for investment properties, as I mentioned, uh, one thing a person needs to do before jumping into that uh, particular type of investing is to crunch the numbers and see if the, the rent amount uh, satisfies the mortgage plus the insurance plus taxes plus uh, maintenance fees that the investor has to make and invest only if it does happen. So in other words, yes, we do pay more for property taxes compared to securities investing, but that money is paid by the renters as a part of their rent as well. So there's not real tax burden on the investors when the numbers are right. A third problem with uh, real estate investing is that uh, more as more time passes, the maintenance and repair needs of the property increase. So you have to cater to those needs more and more often as years pass, whereas that doesn't happen with securities investing. Obviously, there's no maintenance or repair for stocks or mutual funds. So there's a bit of an inconvenience involved in this, and that inconvenience could also mean large sums of money uh, as well. For example, if the, the roof roof leaks in the property and needs to be replaced altogether, then it would be a pretty costly repair to do. And then uh, another drawback would be the investor or landlord or the homeowner being having some legal responsibilities and liabilities in his investing in investment. So when you buy a property for investment purposes and rent it out to someone else uh, and something happens to your tenants, then uh, you might be considered responsible. Uh, so that, that aspect is one drawback, major drawback of real estate investing, which uh, again, securities investing doesn't come with such a burden. So the last word, uh, as I mentioned during the 10 principles of investing, there is no such thing as a perfect investment. Every investment has some pros and cons. A smart investor takes and knows all of them and takes advantage of these pros and cons and creates a portfolio that's consistent with his or her risk level, expectations, investment span, etc., and makes use of these different types 
of investments. So a properly balanced portfolio or you know, just overall asset distribution of an individual must have a pro investment property in it, must have a number of company stocks in it, must have a bunch of uh, mutual funds in it, shares in it, CDs and bonds of various sorts, as well as actual cash in it, uh, as well as all, and also life insurance in some cases uh, as well. So I hope uh, this uh, lecture on personal finance becomes uh, uh, a useful information for you to use in your future lives. And I hope all of you understand these principles uh, very well and start your investment life uh, soon and become very successful in the long run. Thank you and have a great day.